Hi everyone, I am Veronica Alfonso and welcome again to Hashtag Career Goals where we introduce you to the different people and possibilities that can hopefully inspire you and motivate you to choose the career of your dreams. Today we're here with Ana Garcia. She's one of the members of the TUM Hyperloop team. They have won four times in a row the SpaceX Hyperloop competition or Hyperloop pod competition, it's a long name. <laughs> And I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for accepting the interview. No, thanks for inviting me. I'm really happy to be able to share this with everyone. Yeah. <laughs> the other day we met in an event and she was explaining um, what they did in, in Hyperloop and I mean in the competition and the whole business also purpose of it. And she, I thought it was really interesting for us to um, interview her, to actually let you guys know also how she got here, what's her experience and her journey in her career. So maybe can you explain a bit about yourself and tell us what you're doing right now and how your whole journey in your career began? Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm a nanotechnology engineer. I studied this career in Mexico. Um, it was a five long degree and afterwards I worked for a little bit but then I decided that I really liked science and I really liked engineering but I really liked also the part of the application of those towards um, the industry or towards the business and that's why then I was looking for other options and other master degrees that could help me apply everything that I had learned in the engineering side but now towards the business and the industry part. And that's how I found out about TUM. And this university is really, really good because they have um, the approach of also doing um, the business part, but specifically for engineers. So I applied to uh, this master's, which is called Master in Management. So it's a pretty cool master's, which is a focus for engineers or scientists that now want to see this other side of, of, the, of, of business. And yeah, I, I got accepted and now I'm here. As soon as I came to TUM, I learned about Hyperloop and the team, which is just known everywhere, I think, because of the Hyperloop competitions. And I thought it was a really, really cool um, team. And I replied, and that's why I've been here now for a year. Okay, and now you are concentrating more in the business side of the whole project in, in Hyperloop, right? Exactly, so um, what I'm trying to do is like, with the understanding that I have of the um, Hyperloop, being able to develop a business, the business part of, of the of Tum Hyperloop. So we are pretty much the summary. What we're doing is trying to develop a business plan towards mm -hmm. the vision of the Hyperloop system. Okay. And how would you describe this um, this experience for you and your career personally? How was it? How how can you describe it to everyone? Um, being part of the team has been really amazing because I've uh, been able to apply all of the little things that I'm learning th in, my, in my master's and that I've learned through my whole degree, yeah. um, also in the bachelor's, to something practical. So I think it's been a very hands-on experience and also being able to work with a lot of people from very different backgrounds. So a lot of engineers, but also people that are also doing business and that are doing science. And I think this is a very multidisciplinary project. Yeah. And for me, it's been super, um, yeah, very, like very, very, rewarding to be able yep. to uh, share with so many people this this part of, of, of business. So you were saying that it was actually a really great experience because you could um, apply everything that you were learning in your master's here in this project and how else do you think it influenced your career this particular project how do you think it influenced mm -hmm. your career? Um, I think it can also be seen the other way around mm -hmm. uh, in the sense that uh, when I was in my bachelor's, I was doing a little bit of um, a feasibility analysis of uh, nanoparticles to be able to see if we could develop a product from those. And it was really, really interesting because I could see that everything has always two sides. So the scientific part and then the application part through a business um, analysis, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, having learned that in my bachelor's and then being able to uh, learn more deeply into the theory of everything in my master's, was really, really um, enriching. And then finally being able to come here and applying that also was, was, was really nice. And on the other side, for example, I'm in my class of entrepreneurship and they're teaching me how to create a business model canvas. <laughs> and then I'm here and then I'm like, okay, that would be really useful for our team because we could be able to structure things in a very uh, clear way and to understand 
who can be a, a potential customer or who what could be our potential um, market channel. So I think that has been really nice to be able to use this as a parallel um, path in which I can yeah. um, what I, I learn in the in the university, apply it in the team, and what I learn in the team, then I, I can also apply it in the university. So it's just very nice to be able to find this um, yeah balance between both of them. So now that you are doing the masters and then you are so focused in a project that's let's say mostly engineering and of course you're in the business side how do you think uh, do you think you have left behind a bit the nanotechnology side mm. do you miss it or <laughs> do you think it was a great idea at some point you chose to just maybe shape your career but like a bit differently um i i do miss the part of nanotechnology because for me that was some a very nice time of my life which was very theoretically i learned a lot about physics and chemistry and biology and it was really a very um um full engineering bachelors uh but i thought for me i was missing the part of the application towards uh the the big scale so for me um, I did need to also go towards the, the, the side of business and a lot of my friends are always asking me like why would you change to business after you studied mm. as such a scientific um, bachelors and just for me I think it's important to have people in science that also can understand many aspects of the scientific yeah. and the engineering side but then also understand some of the business part so that I think that's what um, motivated me to, 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 to do this change how they, they say it, to change <laughs> yeah. to the business side. Um, uh, but actually, I don't. I don't think I, I've left it completely behind because here it's been since it's a very engineering project. Yep. I've also been able to work a lot with 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 the people that are doing the technical side. So sometimes I go to the workshop and I'm helping them with some of the um, parts, or maybe that while they're designing, they're talking about why they should be doing it with this material instead of this other material. And I'm still there being part of the conversations and still being part of how all of the decisions are being made. So at the end, I don't feel like I've completely left behind the engineering part. I think it's all like tangled around. And I think yeah. that's really, really nice about mm, yeah, the Yeah, you more project. shaped it in like, like you adapted it a bit, maybe your career path, but not really changed it. So that's also yeah, interesting yeah. To, to see. And we can also see that the careers are not something that's definite. I mean, if you study something, then you're going to do that for the rest of your life. You can yeah, also definitely. discover things in, the, in, in, the, in your life and see that probably I should go this way a bit further from my yeah. original path. I think the important side, at least for me, for my bachelor's was like the formation that I got as an engineer and then all of the doors that I was able to open because of this bachelor's. And then once I had this, like the basic bachelor part, then I could then um, apply it uh, and then decide, okay, I want to go to this channel or to this direction. And I think it was, it was really, really nice, uh, as you said, to be able to then shape it towards what I wanted. Yeah, exactly. Was there a moment, a specific moment where you said, wow, I need to change or, or like I need to do something different, a bit different, go into business. Like, was it there an experience or something particular that you can, or maybe like a story, uh, I was somewhere mm -hmm. and I saw this person inspire me and then that's why I, I, I shaped um, the career. Yeah, I think like one of the, the main moments was when one of the teachers from, from my bachelor's was asking us uh, to give her our curriculums, our CV, so that she could go through them and maybe give us feedback. And that way she could also support us through, um, I don't know, our next steps when we were done mm -hmm. with the bachelors. Yeah. And when I was writing my CV and I was like finding what my objective would be or what I wanted to focus it towards, I realized that at the end my objective was more the application. I didn't know yet that this was the business side. I just knew that I wanted to apply the science into something useful. Oh. And I think that's when I gave her my CV and when she got back to me, she was like, I think that um, your focus is really nice and I would like you to help me develop the business side of this um, nanoparticles that I've been mm -hmm. working with. And that's when I realized, okay, maybe what I want to do is more business than than the um, laboratory part yeah. of, of, of science. And I think that was like the eye opener for me when I realized that I wanted to know more about how to do this business of engineering and science. Yeah, so that, that particular experience with your te teacher helping her and so on, um, so you got to experience if you actually liked it first before you went and, and did the masters. So mm -hmm. tell us a bit about that experience because yeah, I sure. think it's really helpful. <laughs> for 
Um, yeah, I think being able to first do a little project and do um, first trying and seeing if it works and if, it, if, if it's what you like, it's very important. And for me, this project was that because I was first able to discover this other side that I didn't know that much about. And afterwards, uh, we, with this project, we were able to participate in some entrepreneurship um, competitions, and then we were able to go to USA to present it. And um, wow. it had been, it was a, a very um, nice moment because I was able to see that what I was doing was having some really nice results. Yeah. And then that's when I realized that if I wanted to keep on pushing entrepreneurship ideas or scientific. Um, 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 ideas further, I think I wanted to have more knowledge on the business side. And that's why I think for me it was really useful to have this project as a first step and as a first approach to what I wanted to do and it really opened my eyes to understand I want to do a yeah. master's in business. Okay, so was there anything that was holding you back a bit? Because sometimes people also want to maybe change a bit their, their career path and they want to go into something else but they, they are a bit scared or they have people telling them not to do it. Mm -hmm. So how did you get the confidence and, and did you have the support that you needed to actually go ahead with it and not feeling like you were wasting five years mm -hmm. of your bachelor's but you were just seeing it as something that was adding to your career? Yeah, sure. Um, I think the first thing that was a little bit holding me back was um, that everyone around me were all deciding to go on paths that were very scientific. So yeah. they were trying now to do their masters in nanomedicine and all of these like nano approaches that were super nice. But I just didn't feel that I fit in there because yeah. of the things that I had been doing before. And then when I found out about this master's at TUM, and I really liked that it was only focused towards engineers and yeah. to scientists because that made me understand that it was for people that had my same background yep. that also had this um, motivation to, to go to the business side. And then when I decided to make the, the change <laughs> and when I went to, to the business part, um, the first thing when I came to the first day of classes at TUM, I asked my people, the people around me, what are you studying? What did you, what, what did you do for your bachelor's? And they were all from so many different backgrounds that it made me feel like really secure and very safe yeah. that everyone, even if they come from other areas it's okay to then decide okay I want to give this focus even if it's if it's not a focus that is completely related to your bachelor's but I think there's always a way to use your pre previous knowledge course, yeah. into what you're going to do on the next step so that's why for example I decided to join the, the team of Tune Hyperloop because I didn't want to leave the engineering side behind mm -hmm. and I always wanted to keep on focusing it this way towards the engineering part of business. So that's why I never, I'm, I don't feel right now that I like wasted four or five years of a bachelor's. Of course not. So yeah. I think, I think it, it all adds up and it all So you got a lot source. of support from, you saw that there were other people like you. So maybe getting a community of people around you that once it's going to towards the same goal is really important. And, exactly. And yeah. 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 Having, you. having people around you that also have some kind of same mindset, but also um, even if they don't have the same mindset, like the people from my bachelor's, uh, it also is nice when you surround yourself with different from dif from people from different ideas. Yeah. But at the end, what motivated me and what like told me, okay, you're going to the right path, was that having this community yeah. of people that maybe are also doing it the same way or a similar way as me. Great, great. So going back to the Hyperloop <laughs> team, um, and you've been in contact a lot with this um, new, the future of mobility. The event where we met was actually about the future of mobility and. How do you think that the job market for transportation and mobility is going to be shaped or is going to be different in the next 10 years since you've been like working a lot with, with mm -hmm. this? And do you think there are some new jobs that are going to be really important in, in the future of transportation and mobility, some new careers that mm -hmm. maybe now they're okay, but they will definitely be so important in the future? Mm -hmm. um, right now, I think that the most important thing is that we are developing new trends. So there are new trends of how people are behaving, how people need new, um, they are the needs of the people. And that's why the mobility is also changing because yeah. it's changing towards these trends. So that's why we can see that now there's so much focus towards electric cars and then so much, so much focus towards um, faster trains or safer or yeah. self-driving. So I think 
this is definitely opening also a lot of doors for different careers. Um, I think all the types of engineering are useful because at the end, engineering is what um, puts all of it together. But I just see that everything that ends up analyzing people and how people are changing their needs is also very important. So that's why for me, business in this case was uh, a, a way mm -hmm. to open doors towards this mobility and the, f the future of mobility. And um, I think maybe not that many new, um, not that many new <laughs> degrees will open, but I think more specifications towards um, different ways of programming or different. So from your experience in engineering, um, can you give all the aspiring engineering engineers, sorry, one advice that you think can be really helpful for them in, throughout their careers? The most useful thing for me was um, maybe there are some aspects of engineering that maybe we don't like. For example, I didn't like biology when I was studying nanotechnology. But then when you start um, going through um, different focuses of engineering, then you realize that everything is useful. So every aspect of engineering and even those classes that are not so much fun, maybe chemistry, maybe physics, end up being super useful at the end. Even if I'm doing business, for example, uh, here in Hyperloop, it's interesting to understand, okay, um, how fast can a pod go? Mm. And why are the, what are the limitants to a pod going fast? And that's all physics. So at the end, everything comes from, um, yeah, I don't know. I would just say my advice is be able to be open to every knowledge that will come to you, even if maybe at first you don't like it. I'm sure that everything will then be useful afterwards. Beautiful. Every knowledge probably is going to be yes, useful. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and one career advice that you would give, like a general career advice that you would give to mm -hmm. any people, not only engineers, so to any maybe young person that wants to, that needs to pick a career and they don't know what they want to do, mm -hmm. or maybe someone that wants to change careers. Um, I would say just do what you like, do what actually motivates you and do what makes you feel happy. Um, and then at the end, just don't care about what other people say. I mean, okay, it's, it's really good to hear advices and to talk to people and maybe to listen to um, their ideas and their point of view. But I think at the end, what's important is what you like and what you decide. And maybe at the end, if it feels right, um, and then you put all your effort towards it, yeah. it you will make it work. So I think, I think that would be my, my main advice, just, and I, maybe it's too mainstream, but I would just <laughs> say, do what you like, and at the end, everything ends up working towards it because you're motivated to do more things, and then you start pushing, and I think action creates more, more action. And at the end, that's what makes uh, makes you feel happy that when you start yeah. seeing that your actions are creating results and then I think that's what for me was a bit scary for example at the beginning mm. to change and a lot of people were saying no, like no why are you doing this why are you focusing there but I think at the end is um, yeah it just feels right at some point and you just keep on doing it and at the end you, you feel really happy about it. There was something in you that, that was making you feel like it was the right decision to make. Yeah, sure. I think, I think, and right now when I'm doing this about Hyperloop and I'm studying here in Germany, I don't know, it just, it makes me very happy and that I did the decision and that I'm now understanding this other side of engineering. <laughs> Great. Well, I don't have any more questions, but do you have anything that you would like to add? Um, no, I think I'm just happy that you had me here for the interview <laughs> and I'm super happy to share about Hyperloop and about my experience and I hope um, yeah, if anyone has more questions, I'm also here. Yes, of course. So if you have any more questions, you can comment below and I will try to send them to her. And of course, get your reply as soon as possible and hit like and also sus subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get more videos like this. And thank you so much for watching and thank you again, Anna. Thank for you. Me. <laughs> Bye.